All right, so what feature is this graph not showing you? It's not showing you that there's a hole in this graph. A hole, all right? So think about, think about when you used to graph in, uh, in your pre-calculus and possibly in Algebra 2 as well. You know, if, if you would graph something like uh, x minus 2 times x plus 3 over x minus 2 times x plus 2. Do you remember how to graph that? Yeah, so you would look for any matching factor top and bottom you would know as a whole, right? This would be a whole right there. So we'd have a whole at x equals 2. What other things, you know, just to remind you, this is going to tell you that there's a vertical asymptote in your denominator, a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. Um, this one up here is going to tell you there's an x-intercept at x equals negative 3. Um, you can get the y-intercept by um, just getting rid of the x's, and it should be 3 over 2. So your um, y-intercept would be 3 over 2. And you could look at that if I foiled out the top, the two leading coefficients are going to be x squared over x squared. So I have matching degrees, so I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 1. So, you know, just because we can do that quickly, it doesn't have anything to do with our problem. I'm just reminding you what a hole is and how you graph these things so, and how quickly you could do it. So y-intercept of 3 halves looks like that. Um, vertical asymptote at negative 2, negative 2. A horizontal asymptote at 1, that's less than 3 halves, so that looks like this, y equals 1, and uh, what else, x-intercept at negative 3, so I have x-intercept at negative 3, let's pick a color for that, so here's our, oh, at negative 3, huh? so that's over here, all right, x-intercept like that, all right, so now I know everything this graph looks like, um, it looks like this, showing, this is an odd multiplicity vertical asymptote, so that means, and by the way, this was an odd multiplicity x-intercept, so that's how I knew it went through. Also has to approach both asymptotes. Has to approach both asymptotes up here as well. Um, however, I know that when I get to x equals 2, I'm going to put a hole in it like that. That's what that graph looks like. All right, so that's this is just sort of, you know, review. Review of graphing rational functions. If you don't know how to do that, send me an email and I'll, I'll develop it more for you. All right, so if I were to scratch, sketch a graph of this function by hand, I would see that there is a hole right here. I have a matching factor top and bottom, just like you have matching factor top and bottom right here. So there's a hole at delta t equals zero. And then if I reduce out the hole, I get this, what we already determined was a negative parabola. So we could easily have graphed all that by hand. And the advantage of graphing it by hand is we would not neglect the hole. So we know that there's a hole uh, at delta t equals zero. We also know the y-coordinate of the hole by just um, putting delta t equals zero here and getting negative 2193.75. Uh, so that's here, 2193.75. And then we know it's a downward-facing parabola, so we know it does this. Yep, so that's that's how we do that graph by hand. It's, so we would be able to see that there is a hole in that graph. All right, other things I wanted to talk about this graph. Um, this is this is a delta t axis, and this is r of delta t. All right, so we've we we're concerned with delta t greater than zero. That's really the domain of the problem. Therefore, we should ignore the left-hand side of the graph, the negative side, because that's not in the domain of the problem. Delta t has to be positive. So, uh, but it's important to know that, uh, like sometimes when I ask people, like, why aren't we looking at the negative values? People will say things like, time cannot be negative. So if this were a time axis, you would never have negative time, right? Which that's not true. Um, time itself can be positive or negative. Time can be positive or negative. And you're going to see this in problems both in physics and mathematics. Um, negative time just means before something happens. So for example, we're, we're finding the velocity at 25 seconds after the uh, probe enters the atmosphere. Well, what if you wanted to talk about something that happens 10 seconds before the probe enters the atmosphere? Well, the probe's entering the atmosphere at t equals zero, but t equals zero is arbitrary. Right, t equals zero, you just define that to be whatever um, is interesting to you. Right, so if we're looking at atmospheric reentry, we might have t equals zero be entry point, and, and you know, 10 seconds before that would be t equals negative 10. 
Uh, you, in fact, you hear this when you when people launch rockets back in the day when they count, you used to count down. They would go t minus ten, t minus nine, t minus eight. Right? They mean t, t is negative ten, meaning ten seconds before launch, the launch time is zero. All right. So time in general can be negative. However, delta t is the length of an interval of time. And the length of the interval of time cannot be negative. Essentially, like if you remember, our interval goes from 25 minus delta t to 25 plus delta t. If delta t were negative, then uh, 25 minus delta t would be greater than 25 plus delta t, and this interval would be improperly written. So um, you have a graph over here that's an artifact, not because time cannot be negative, time can totally be negative. It just means before the arbitrary zero point. However, an interval of time cannot be negative in length. All right, so we're going to talk more about the whole in the next video.